Repent, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Oh, arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. Good morning. I'm Father Sam Moorhead, the rector of the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception here in downtown Denver, Colorado. And it's my joy to welcome you to this pre-recorded televised mass on the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time touched him and ordered, get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God. O oh, rat, the word of the Lord. and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the 
goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame when a the afflicted man called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reveling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? 
then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about relationship. It's all about God's relationship and our relationship and our relationship with God, caught, caught up with God in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. We hear today as the Lord Jesus continues in these weeks his great sermon on the bread of life, this mystery of himself offered to us in the most holy Eucharist. We hear his relationship to the Father and us being invited into that relationship. At the beginning of the Mass in the Collect, we prayed that we would know and be renewed in our spirit of adoption, that being adopted in Christ, we would come to an eternal inheritance. It's all about relationship. First, God. God is a trinity, clearly revealed by Christ, who is the full self-disclosure of God, who's come to perfect and fulfill revelation. Jesus is the one sent by the Father. He says elsewhere, the Father and I are one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the three persons of the one God. And the second person, Jesus, is God the Word, God the Son, sent to take our flesh. The flesh that he offers us in the Eucharist, he first assumed from the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so we see one who is being dismissed by the Jews, who are grumbling in this scene. Don't we know his father and his mother? Can't we say that we can decrease our appreciation for Jesus because we can reduce him to his mere mortality? No, his true father is not Saint Joseph, it's God the Father. Mary is his mother, but she was the spotless virgin who gave God flesh who could assume our nature so as to live among us, suffer and die for us, rise again victorious, and then lead us to life. But so that all of the mysteries of our redemption by his death and resurrection could be given to us, he left us the church and the sacraments and that sacrament par excellence, the most holy Eucharist. Yes, we will learn in the synoptic gospels at the Last Supper that Christ offered us his body and blood when he said, take this all of you and eat of it, and take this all of you and drink from it, giving us his body and blood, instituting the holy sacrifice of the mass. But he's teaching us in this gospel of St. John that what he offers, what is offered through the church, is his life for the world, his flesh, his blood poured out, our sustenance. And look what happens. The old adage is ever true. You are what you eat. When we receive Jesus Christ, as we have him within us in the sacrament, by lively faith, having first been baptized, we are assimilated to him, united to him, configured and conformed to him. We become one with him. One with him? We are now one with the Son of God. We find ourselves adopted. We find ourselves in Christ, made heirs of the kingdom of God and sons and daughters of the Father Almighty. That's not half bad, that. So let us this Sunday rejoice in the gift of the Eucharist. Let us recommit ourselves to frequent and worthy reception of Jesus himself, the bread of life, who offers himself as life for the world. Let us treasure this gift. Let us become what we eat. Let us realize it's all about relationship, ourselves caught up in God.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the goodness of God, who pours out mercies upon us, we now offer some of our many needs and prayers. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Samuel Aquila, and all who lead and guide the church, that they would always faithfully give us the bread of life, Jesus and the Most Holy Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our government and elected officials, and especially those who are Catholic, that they would see the good of assimilating their life more fully to Christ, crucified and risen. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of our community, those who are poor and needy, that they would find help from God and from the Christian community in their every need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died, that purified of their sins, they would be admitted to the eternal banquet of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we come before you rejoicing this Sunday morning. Fill us with every grace and all delight, for we make these and all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the Church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabbat, Plenis Uncelia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Samuel our Bishop, and Jorge his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord, who gives you your fill of finest wheat.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I hope this Sunday that you have a deep encounter with the Lord Jesus, that you know you are made one with him through this great sacrament, and that in this life of faith you are led right onto the heart of God. And then, as we are so connected with God and caught up in relationship with him, then we can turn round about and draw others into relationship with us and with God. So it's all about relationship, us with God rolling out for the world around us. Have a beautiful week this week. I invite you, please keep the good of this Mass in mind by supporting the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception here in Denver, and also by any gifts you can offer to the Catholic Foundation of the Archdiocese of Denver. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Mata misericordiae, vita dulcero, espes nostra sole. A te clamamus, axulas fili have, a te suspiramus. Pre recorded TV Mass is made possible by the Archdiocese of Denver and the Catholic Foundation. Hi, I'm Father Matthew McGee a priest here in the Archdiocese of Denver. And each week, people from across Colorado, around the country and the world, tune into TV Mass here each Sunday. On the air since 1966, TV Mass continues to bring the Word of God to those who cannot attend. For more information and ways to support TV Mass, please visit thecatholicfoundation.com.